a time. Let's talk about the, the Sabbath. Right? We call the Sabbath Bamarinya. In them heart, we call the Sabbath equals the Se Ne Be Se. Or the Se Ne Be Se. It's the Senbet. Now, the Sabbath is the seventh day. Let's put this here. It's the seventh day. It's a day, the Shabbat is a day of rest. Or Bamarinya is known as an I Re Sit End. As an I Re Sit Sit. That's a Schwa. And this is N. I put the little. This this will be after the Q, so it's a K. It's a K. K. It's that click, that ancient click, the the kof, the kof, or some say the kof, but actually it's the kof has a click sound. So the Sabbath is important because it's the Senbet day, and the Senbet day is the seventh day. Now we can say, and this is true, that it's it's commanded. This is something that is commanded. Now, when we talk about covenant, this is something that we as the once lost but now found Beta Israel, as so-called black people, you understand, in the Americas and the Caribbean. We are the Beta Israel. We are the house of Israel. And we're likened to the Ethiop Yawian or the Ethiopian, the faithful. Let's distinguish that. The faithful Ethiopians. How do we know this? Amos 9 and 7. So we can put that as a reference too, because some are still a little bit confused. Not all Ethiopians are faithful Ethiopians, and this should be very clear to us. But there is a remnant. Let's recognize that. And this is some a discussion that we've been having and even the debate with some of the Hebrew Israelites, and we understand where they're coming from. But let us get to the basics, the root, the foundation, the truth. Let's look at our ancestors, our our Hebrew and Israelitish ancestors, and let us recognize how important it is to have unity around the covenant within the house and among the children of Israel and us as the children of the Ethiopians, and recognize that Yahweh's word is his word. Yes, he says that the Ethiopians, ye Ethiopians, also shall be slain by my sword. And we see that in, in, in history. We recognize the sword of Yahweh that has taken judicial judgment on those careless Ethiopians who have betrayed the king of kings, the king of Israel. This is not something new, my brothers and sisters, that I'm, I'm saying this to some of the, some of the Israelites, the other black Israelites and the other Hebrew Israelites, because we understand where they're coming from. We are an Afro American. We are Afro American. We are Judean. You understand? So ones might um, judge a book, so called, by the cover, or because the cover appears like another book. But we're not Rasta. We are Rastafari. We understand our Ethiopian Hebrew roots, and we can trace this back to a Rabbi or a Rebbe or uh, Matthews, uh, Wentworth, Arthur Matthews, and, and Crowdy in the very roots. We understand how the how the movement like divided. You understand with certain teachers back in from the from the seventies and the eighties and so forth and so on. But let not us be divided about the truth. You understand the truth is the truth. So. This is uh, like we 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 keep um, thinking about our some of our black Hebrews like brothers and sisters because me you know I, and I know many of them you understand know, at least some of the older ones you know, and we've had this debate and some were fiery against Hala Selassie oh fire but he's an Ethiopian so forth and so on but then some of them actually went and looked up certain things and they started to put things together and said wow like how come this has not been known. You see, the divide and conquer, that's the strategy of the enemy. But let's just touch on this on, on the Shabbat, the Senbet. 
and, and the Torah portion readings and feedings. As, as we have made known and, and sought to make this known in the first or the earlier part of this um, this brief uh, video series on Rastafari, on the Rastafari Sabbath uh, keepers and the and the Sabbath house readings, the, the Torah portion, let's call it the Torah portion readings and feedings. This was a former uh, version that we had put out, this one right here. It has the same, a similar cover, but if you look inside, we, we point to the fact of the updates and the areas that we had to amend it so that it agrees more with our Ethiopic and Royal Amharic met of Kedus and so that we can be strengthened, you understand, not weakened. Now this brings us back to the Senbet, the Senbet and the, and the Sabbath or the Shabbat. Now the Shabbat day is an arrest and it's a day of rest. Let us just hear for a moment. Let's go over this for a moment. Since we're going to get into this teaching, and we want to teach it as full as possible because many of our brothers and sisters need groundation. They need groundation. They need the foundation. Now, the groundation and discipleship, as we mentioned before, it begins with that discipline of the mind because the discipline of the mind is a discipleship. His Majesty Kedusa Bhattachin teaches us that that discipline of the mind is a basic ingredient of genuine morality and therefore the spiritual strength. You understand? And, and that spiritual power is it, it's, it's the wana wana, it's, it's the main thing, wana wana alama. Is, it should be the main objective, that's true spiritual groundation in this world and in the world to come. Because we're living in very prophetic times. And it behooves us to become spiritually prepared and to redeem the time. The scriptures teach us about redeeming the time because the days are kufu, the days are evil. This does not say that I and I, because we seek to remember the Sabbath and keep it all, are sinless and have a sinless perfection. However, I and I admit that perfection is the goal. You understand? Know As Jesus Christos teaches us, perfection. Now, what does it mean to be perfect? I think we've touched on this um, previously in a recent video that we touched on. It was on the subject matter of when it says, B, oh, it was Matthew. Matthew, I think it was Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, where we were speaking about the Kalata Wengel, and we go to Matthew chapter 5, is what we find right here. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48 it says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. And the, then the Schofield Study Bible that has a footnote down here next to perfect. It says, The word implies full development full, complete development, growth into maturity of godliness. Now, godliness is interesting, Bamarinya, in them heart, because godliness, in other words, Gizyavi, the sustainer, or Yahweh, he who is who he is, you understand, or the, or the living one, the I am that I am. The memsel, memsel, and we have in the Hebrew, um, Mishle. Mishle is Proverbs, like the book of Proverbs. In the Amharic of the King of Kings, that book is known as Metahafe Nisale. So if you listen to the word Mishle, Nisale, you will find that they are Temesasa. They are, they are very much similar because they come from that same root. Remember, Ethiopia is one of the first places mentioned in the scripture. In the sense, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. There's a prophetic that says that princes shall come out of Egypt and Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands unto God. And, and we have to also remember where it says that, um, aren't you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So Israel according to the scriptures, is compared to the children of the Ethiopians. So when we start to study all these various reference points, scripturally, historically, biblically, prophetically, it starts to give us the full picture. 
and that full picture is what leads us to that full development, growth into maturity of godliness. So godliness means resembling God. Now, how do we resemble God? This is what's interesting, what's hidden um, within these words like godliness. See, from a, we get lost in translation a lot. And, and the first level is to, first of all, recognize and understand what this present translation, the, the English translation, in particular the King James translation, is all about, using this as a structure, as a beginning point. But we need to redeem time in order to do that. We need to use the time and our mind wisely. So within the Kal Kidan, within that covenant, you know, the covenant that our ancestors lost, and now in this time of redemption, we have a time to reclaim it. That's if we choose this day whom we will serve. Because a lot of our brothers and sisters, even a lot of us, you know, we may not go into all the experiences that we've had, so-called in the world, and what we know about this wicked, this evil world. And it's not that we, like we said, are sinless and perfect, but the Almighty has taken us from some place, has shown us his true Christ, both in spirit and in truth and the reality of it. And by and by, as big as, we are maturing and growing, you understand, and we all have that potential. No matter, you know, enough ones are feeling guilty about certain things they've done, and perhaps on a certain level, certain things they did were wrong. But the Almighty has allowed us an opportunity, and we'll be fools if we reject it, brothers and sisters. We'll be fools. But anyway, perfect. When the fool says in his heart, there is no God. So if God is not in our heart, and not, what does it mean to have something in your heart or to learn something? You know what it means to learn something by heart? It's to almost memorize it. That's, that's a very good sabbatical exercise to practice one's memory. Of course, ones might, you know, forget something or, or miss a point. You understand? You know, rally and just, just, just rem because you begin to create a, a, you grow new branches in your mind. In other words, you, you start to grow that tree of life in your mind, and, and in, in your body, in your being, in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body, little by little. But the Sabbath is the key. See, see that Sabbath right there is, is the seal. It's like a seal of the Almighty God. Not just the day, but the state of mind. Let's, let's understand that. Because the commandment, we're going to get into the commandment. Let's just go through this right here where it says, So not sinless perfection, now Ephesians 4, verses 12 to 13. We want to touch on that if we have an opportunity to. In this passage, the passage from Matthew chapter 5, now, another very good thing to do, brothers and sisters, is to take notes, you know, to have a, a concordance notebook, especially if one says, yes, I and I want to be, get serious about this. You know what I'm saying? Put it to the test. Get your composition notebook. Start taking those notes. Start looking up. Start writing down different references or the things that are relevant to your mind and to what you what you're studying and what you're finding out in that study, and then when that one finds spiritual brothers and sisters of that like spiritual mind, one can reason. You understand, iron sharp and iron. That's the beginning of the mikurab. That's the beginning of what one will call the synagogue from the from the Greek, or the beginning of the prayer house, or or or, or the study group. You understand, but the individual, you have to, each, each of I and I have to have some sort of foundation or groundation, and sometimes we have to go into a solitude. You see, so the sabbatical time is, and we're not talking about anything fanatical. But let's just understand that because a lot of folks, sometimes we all do, especially when we're young and we like that experience, so we think it's about a fanatical. It's not the outward. It's the inner sense. It's taking this word within us and is submitting ourselves in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach to that word. And, and, and it's a process, brothers and sisters. It's a process. Because sometimes, you know, we all fall down in that sense spiritually. But we have to, what do, in other words, what do we put in the spiritual bank that can then lift us up and say, okay, yeah. And we can recognize that. And that can transform something in ourselves that we can help a next brother or sister because our experience now that's digested, it has a resonance 
You see, so that's part of that perfection. So in this passage, it's the Father's kindness, not his sinlessness. That is the point in question concerning Matthew chapter 5. Now check that out. If you can check out the video that we did, the discipleship video on the uh, Alata Wengel, you understand the words of the good news, especially here in Matthew chapter concerning turn the other cheek, so forth and so on. I think it's a very important teaching to get a basic foundation of and then take your own time. Even if it's Sabbath time, just make some time. You have to make some time. You can't let Babylon get you like that, like 24-7, seven, seven days a week. You, you know that even, you, you know, we all do what we want to do within time. We make time. We find a way to do it. So also find a way to remember the Sabbath, the send that day, and to keep it set apart and begin to learn of him during that that day and time and you'd be surprised and amazed my brothers and sisters what your own pen and your own composition notebook being faithful first of all first of all we have a basic a basic pattern a basic order you understand a basic order not that one just must study what's in this order you understand because right now we're at let's go to the page we're at we're at this this is weak this is Shabbat 9, and we're in Tekemet, and we still have to teach on that, brothers and sisters. Yovis. But regardless of us even teaching on it, or so-called not teaching on it, once you have this root, this foundation and foundation, you have to allow His Holy Spirit to guide you and to humble you so you, so you remember the Sabbath, keep it set apart, take that time out, you understand, individually or collectively. But each one has that personal responsibility, especially us as, as so-called grown folks. If we have a rule over youths or house or, or whatever, those things are under our, well, let's get, to, let's get to the command. Those things are under our authority. And we can't say, I mean, check this out. I know we've been through a lot of stuff, brothers, and it's not like so-called overnight. But the Holy Spirit, how, how does the Holy Spirit work? In the grace and the mercy of Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach, Getachin Nam and Hanatachin Jesus Christos, you don't want to put no limit on that because Jah is the limit. And in Jah, you understand, it is limitless in him. But he is that limit. He is, they like say the sky is the limit, well, Jah is the limit. You know, and I was just, this is another point, but I was watching. I saw a brief show the other day. Uh, I think it was today, actually. It was on DMX, brother DMX, and and you know he's been through a lot. But when we're seeing these brothers and others out there finding the Lord, even if they're finding it through some level of Christianity, you understand. But we know what they've been through to really find the realness of it and still keep that realness in it, you know. This is what makes me want to pray for my brothers and sisters and, and to do good in the King of Kings and his Christ for as many that I and I am able to. Now, let's get to this right here about the seventh day, about the Sabbath day. So Exodus, take note, Exodus chapter 20. Let's go to this right here. Exodus, let's go to this right here. We have Exodus chapter 20 and begins in verse 8 and it goes to um, verse 11 verse 8 to verse 11 now there's some there's some follow up there's some follow up areas and portions that, that, that go along with that there's some follow up areas and portions in other words other portions of the scripture we could even go to I think it's chapter what chapter 2 around chapter 2 when the Shabbat time or the Sendet time is first mentioned. However, um, however, suffice it to say we're going to begin with um, the, the commandments. Now, why the commandments is important is because there's two keys, according to the book of Revelation, there's two keys. I want you to pay attention to this, brothers and sisters. There's two keys in the book of Revelation. It says that these, uh, the, the, the overcomers, the ones who are in the world, not of the world, in these last days and time, but that would overcome it, 
spiritually, psychologically, and even on the body or the so-called material level that will overcome this matrix or Babylon, they keep, protect, guard the commandment, right, and the testimony of Jesus Christos. Do you understand that? They keep the commandment. Of God, of Ha Elohim Baruch of the Giziavi Her Lotus of Hat, and the testimony or the witness, the witness, and even if it's to the point of martyrdom of Getachina Med Hanatachin, Jesus Christos, of Adonenu Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, when you go through and you study um, Revelation, you'll find that there. Mm. We can give you the verse, but it's good when one seek these things out for themselves as well. You understand? When one seek them, if you just begin from Revelation, you go through because you need to really capture the fullness. You understand the fullness of that. Now let's go through Exodus right here in the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is very, very important. It's that one seventh of our time or really one-seventh of our time, yes, that belongs to Yahweh. He's not going to snatch you and take it from you. You understand? But he sends forth his word and the messages of his word that explains the reality and the logic of it. Because it's the Logos is Christ. is the Yesus X. The Yesus X is the Logos. He's, now, the X, of course, the X is the unknown factor, but Christ, the true Christ, is not known. If Christ was known in this world, the world would not be in the present state of crisis. And this is all we're seeing. You understand? We're seeing fear, war, rumor of war. But we have to come to the point of, of spiritual stasis. You understand? Where we're not worried or troubled about these things, but in, in spirit and in truth, you understand? We know that we are more than overcomers because of the one who has first loved I and I. And that's why I encourage all of the brothers and sisters to really seek this personal experience, as His Majesty teaches us, this personal experience, and why Christ is that template. He is that example. He is the living, He's a living one. You understand? And a living man, a living spirit. You over so the spirit and the man. See, man has been living materially apart from the spirit. And this is one of the reasons why you know, the world, or the world lid, is in the situation that it's in. Mm. But each of us are responsible. You know, each of us are responsible one-on-one. -on -one. You know, each of us are responsible. So we can say, well, that other guy over there, and maybe he needs to be judged. Maybe I and I need to be judged. You know, this? however, if we judge ourselves, none can judge us. So understand that that's, a word, but you have to meditate. What does that word really mean in context with the fullness? That's that growth into maturity, full development. So here in Exodus, as we said, we could just say that his majesty is a Sabbath keeper. And for all true Rastafari, that there should be good enough. But then what is the Sabbath? You understand? Then we have to get into deepness and from our root and our truth. Senbet. What does senbet? Senebete means too. Senebete, a senebete, a senebetua, like to spend time apart. You know, saying you spend time apart. You know, it's like to rest, but like you, if you rest from, like you work for six. Well, let's get into this right here. It says, first of all, in verse eight, it says, "Remember the Shabbat day or the Sabbath day to keep it holy." Do you hear that commandment? Remember, remember spiritually with our mind, discipline of the mind, remember the what? The Shabbat day to keep it holy. What does holy mean? Holy means set apart. How has it been translated? Lost in translation? You might find it as hallowed. You might find it as holy, consecrated, sanctified. You know, you find these, but really set apart. The root of it is to be set apart set apart for the exclusive use or service of. So even ourselves under the Nazarite, under the Nazarene vow, is to be wholly set apart. You understand? That even itself does not mean sinless perfection, you understand? But it does mean perfection in the example of the Father's kindness, you understand, and his truth. You see, this is like forgiveness. Forgiveness is not just for the other person, 
but it's also for us. Maybe even just deal with the other person from a logical, a spiritual perspective. Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, the Master teaches us. But here it says to remember. So remember, you see, it's a mental, it's a spiritual ascent. To keep it holy, to keep it set apart. So it's not just remembering it, but remembering it in a certain frame of mind or a certain mindfulness to be mindful of the Shabbat day and to meditate on it because there's times I meditate on the Shabbat, what Shabbat means, or meditate on any one of the teachings of the scripture of his majesty. And sometimes you've meditated on it before, but now you meditate and you see something else in it, not different than the, than the context of the, of the previous truth, but building up on that and connect it so you begin to see, wow, this is real. That the word is living. The word is a living entity. So this word here in the book is dead. But now us remembering the Sabbath and joying in his word and drawing from his word and reading and feeding in his word, we, we grow. And then we become also able to discern the brothers and sisters of fellowship because we see that reflection. It's not about like a lot of the pomps and pride and mixed up moves and attitudes that a lot of us have. Because that's the world we're coming from. And the world, some of us still may have one foot in and one foot out of it. Yovas. So, verse 10 says, But the seventh day is the Sabbath day or the Shabbat day of the Lord thy God, of Yahweh Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work. Now, what, what does it mean by work? Work is your occupational labor. Whatever your occupation of somebody, you know, there's all kind of occupations, you know. But the Sabbath day belongs to Yahweh. But it belongs to him, but for, for your benefit, for my benefit, for I and I benefit. Check that out. That's deep. You know, that's, there's heights there. You know, it has death, breath, width. You, you know what I mean? It's, it's, but but, but, there's, but, but it's, 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 it's a small thing, too. You know what I'm saying? But there's a great reward. It's like a seed. So we have to plant that seed in good ground. So this is how we prepare the good ground, the good ground of our mind. So it is a practice that perfects, that makes perfect through the practice and through the mindfulness. Now, here it says, so thou shalt not do any work. Any other occupational thing will take your mind off it. So your mind got to focus on that. doesn't mean that one is not going to focus on you know, other members of the family or household who are also in that spirit and in that truth. But you're not going to focus, be focusing on like money business. You know, you kind of put those things away because you are, you are now in a holy state of mind. It says thou, thou, saying I, because here speaking to the male singular. If you were to be able to read, and when you're able to read the royal Amharic of his majesty's Mets of Caduce, it speaks in the ante language in many places. And ante means you male. Ante. Ante. You understand? It was you male. So when it says thou, it's the ante, nor thy son, nor your male son, nor thy daughter, nor your female, your daughter, or your, your male child, or your female child. Right? Thy manservant. So if one has a manservant, if one has a great house, you always, um, nor your manservant, your male servant, nor thy maidservant, nor your female servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Now, this is deep, my brothers and sisters. This means that we are responsible for our environment. You see, this, this is like a 180 degree you understand, that diametrically opposed to so-called slick willyism, slick willy lynchism, and, and that whole how to make a slave. This is coming out, really out of Babylon, because you're coming out of confusion. You begin to say, it's not, oh, you have maid servant, man servant, and, and this, and you both see, because then it, it speaks against that. Check out Proverbs. Proverbs is another good book for discipleship. So, brothers and sisters, we've been wanting to go into Proverbs because there's some books that we have gone into and we might not get to go into it fully in this, but this is a Mesmora Dawi because as you 
check out our revised and updated um, Sabbath house readings, you will see we talk about this